Hello, my name is Les Litwin. I'm the Technical Sales Director of Antrica. Today I wanted to give you a quick start guide to the ANT1776, which is our um, little UAV Nano. Let me just move the camera so you can actually see what's going on. Apologies for that. There you go. Uh, so the 1776 is a brand new miniature encoder and decoder for streaming a variety of video formats over IP. So in the top half of this picture that you can see in the bottom right hand corner of your screen is the 1776 uh, fitted with two mezzanine boards which are small half sized boards that fit onto the actual motherboard. And in this case the, the top left hand corner is an HDMI mezzanine board. Just move that camera over a little bit so you can just see the HDMI connector there. And the top right hand corner is an HDSDI mezzanine. The bottom right hand corner mezzanine is a quad analog, which is not fitted. And similarly, the bottom left is a single composite video input mezzanine, also not fitted. You can mix and match these four mezzanines in any way you wish. Underneath these two mezzanines that are fitted is the motherboard with a heatsink and that's sitting on a metal plate at the moment to help dissipate some of the heat. So that's the hardware and what I'd like to do is give you an input uh, to the web interface. So here we have Google, uh, Google's Chrome connected to 192.168.0.30 which is the default IP address of the um, 1776. We're going to start with the settings page because this is where we can define what uh, modules are fitted onto this particular board. So without further ado let's get going on settings. So the settings page has a number of pull down menus the most important which of which are the CSI 0 and CSI 1. CSI 0 and CSI 1 are if you imagine connected to these small mezzanines. So CSI 0, CSI 1 are connected to these two mezzanines. So CSI 0 I've defined as being connected to the HDMI board and CSI 1 is connected to the HD-SDI board. Now once we do that uh, we will then find that these two modes will appear and these are the resolutions and frame rates of the signals that are being um, input to these two modules. So once you define those two you would save this and that will effectively define what your CSI 0 CSI 1 is from now on. So I would just remember CSI 0 is HDMI, CSI 1 is HDSDI in this particular example. If, if you had the what analog um, board fitted, you would obviously do that. Okay, the other thing to do whilst you're on this page is have a look at the network settings and actually define whether you want to have this as a manual fixed IP or DHCP and then set up the time server because this will be uh, set to zero effectively by default because we don't have a battery backup on the board this uh, information needs to be set up and that's pretty much all you need for the time being uh, you just save that and that's your settings page done this is a quick start so we'll be going into a lot of these other things in more detail in another video right now let's move to the info page the info page tells us what hardware we've got it tells us what firmware we have uh, installed in this case it's 1070 it also defines the network IP address which we fixed at 0 0.30 which is the default and then interestingly it also shows us whether our signals are connected or not remember CSI 0 is HDMI and CSI 1 is HDSDI so here you can see they're both locked so that's good, that means we've got an active signal going into the two mezzanines and everything's looking good. And then down the bottom here you have some storage information which tells you uh, how much storage you've used for recording files onto the actual board. 
and right at the bottom is is a pretty important part this is the temperature so as you can see I've got mine uh, my board sitting on a metal plate and that's keeping the temperature nicely at 38 degrees centigrade uh, you could equally have uh, fins fitted or you could bolt the board to some other metallic object to help with the heat dissipation or or move the heat in some other way so that's the info page so that's settings and info and now finally we move to the home page and this is where we define the streams so we call streams muxes so think of a mux as a particular stream with a particular streaming format and a particular codec uh, we support a variety of codecs but the two most important ones will be H.264 and H.265 or HEVC. So how do we do that? Well the first thing we do is we open up a MUX. So this is MUX1 and we're going to pick a video to stream. So we can pick CSI0 or we can pick CSI1. Now as you can see CSI1 is the, if you remember, was the HDSDI and this is the HDMI. So we're going to pick HDMI and we're going to pick RTSP because that's what we want to stream. Because we're streaming RTSP, we're going to use the IP address of the board. So in this case, it's 192.168.0.30. And the port for RTSP in this case is 554. We can change that in the more advanced settings, which I'll show you later. So once we've set up all of this, we can save that, which I won't do just yet. At the top, you've got default operations when the board is rebooted. So if you want the stream to start by default when the board reboots, you would just tick that box. The same with recording. The other way to start a stream is to click this little icon over here. And once that starts streaming, it will go green. If you want to start recording, you click that little icon and that will change color. And then you've got some other icons for snapshot and display, which I won't go into at this moment. Now, every one of these muxes has an advanced settings page, and that is here in the bottom right hand corner, this little square with an arrow. You click on that and that opens up a whole range of other features that you can change. So you can change the frame rate, you can change the bit rate, you can change the constant bit rate or variable bit rate and the GOP. And then under virtual video, you can also change, sorry, not virtual video, extended codec, you can change whether you want H.265 or H.264 streaming. Again, some of these other things we'll go into in a lot more detail in another video. So that's pretty much it. You've set up an RTSP MUX, MUX1 in this case, and we've got the streaming icon on. Now we're going to decode that using something called Maris Player. Now Maris Player is a very low latency player that we provide you free of charge and this player can decode the video from end to end in, in about 100 milliseconds. So what we'll do is open up a network stream. This is very similar to how VLC would work, I guess. You select RTSP here, then you input the URL or the IP address of the board, which is 0 0.30, and then you've got an SDP, which is like a, a small identifier that goes at the end of each RTSP URL. So in this case, because we're using MUX1, we're going to use MUX1.SDP, and the port is 554. And then basically when we hit play, this will allow us to stream uh, video to Maris Player with very low latency. In the tool section, you can actually look at the statistics, and this is telling you what's going on in terms of the, uh, the decoded stream. So that's Maris Player decoding the stream. As you can see, we're using a signal generator, uh, which uh, allows us to check that the video is being decoded nice and smoothly. Okay, let's uh, let's set up that video again, but this time let's do it with um, VLC. So we'll open up a network stream with VLC. The URL is now one URL, RTSP, 
IP address and mux1.sdp and we can start to play. It takes a little bit of time because VLC has a thousand milliseconds of buffering so if I open up that network stream again and look at this little box show more options you can see here we've got a thousand milliseconds you can obviously adjust that until you adjust it too low and eventually it will basically stop um, decoding because it hasn't got enough buffering so that's VLC decoding that RTSP stream I'm going to show you next um, Let's just close that one. So we're going to use MUX2, but this time we're going to set up a unicast transport stream, MPEG-TS. So to do this, we select TS. We now input the IP address of the computer or receiving decoder. So whatever, wherever the decoder is, um, is set, it's the IP address of the decoder. In this case, it's the computer that I'm working on. Defined 1236 as the port, and I'm going to save that and start that stream. And I'm going to open up uh, Neptune Player again, and I'll, this time we're going to open up a transport stream. So at the top, we've got a TS, it's unicast, and we're going to set 1236, I think it was, from memory, and play that. So this is an MPEG TS being played on Maris Player or Neptune Player as we call it. So if you wanted to stream a multicast stream, you would define multicast and you would input the IP address, the multicast IP address, which are, as you all know is or are a set of IP addresses defined for multicasting only. So if I stop that, if you were using multicasting, you would put the multicast IP address in here instead of the unicast IP address, and you would define a port in exactly the same way. So that's how you would stream MPEG TS, and with VLC player, it would be very similar. The, the firmware that we're running at the moment, uh, we haven't finalized the MPEG TS. Um, decoding of let me just find the right one so it's that one so basically it would be this would be the URL for a unicast and you would play that uh, as I say we haven't finalized uh, MPEG TS decoding on VLC yet but um, that's coming in the next firmware release so as you can see currently we're not uh, decoding anything with VLC this is just a, a part of the uh, continuous upgrade process that we're going through so again, if you wanted to change the more uh, advanced features, you can uh, click on this little box here and that will open up the advanced settings. So here you've got four different streams. We can actually stream eight different streams depending on the resolution and frame rate and total capability of the uh, encoder. Uh, to access some of the other streams, so MUXs 5, 6, 7 and 8, you would basically input the number of the MUX that you want to configure up here, and that would then open up another MUX setting for you. The, um, these little um, options down the side here are also quite useful. So if we look at format, this is to format the recording memory in the, on the board. Factory default, if you want to reset the board back to its defaults, uh, you can do so there by just clicking that. Update is how we would update the firmware. Now we have two partitions within the board. This is so we can have two different firmwares or have the same firmware on two partitions so that if one of the partitions is corrupted, we have the option of booting from a second partition. Uh, if you were to upgrade the file, you would basically choose the file here and then update. Uh, Input streaming is when the board is being used as a decoder. So this is now, we call this a DMUX as opposed to a MUX. And the output is where we've just come from. So this is where we defined our streaming. And then record files. If 
if you had recorded any of these streams, your files for the recordings would be found here in this particular section. So that's it. Oh, one last thing before I go. If you go to the very top of the page in the right hand corner, there's a little R with a, uh, a rounded arrow. This is reboot. So if you want to do a soft reboot, this is where you would click that button and that would reboot the whole unit. So that's it. That's the, um, that's the video of our quick start guide for the ANT1776. As I say, a more detailed video will be coming shortly.